Look at him go! Let's talk about raising monarch butterflies. So the first thing that you need if you're going to raise your own monarch butterflies is some milkweed. You either need to have some that has volunteered itself in your yard or you can plant some. So over here is some of my milkweed that was a volunteer and you can see I put my pavers around it because I wanted to keep it. I have some behind it here as well nestled in among my beautiful currants and over here behind my raspberries. Milkweed is where monarch butterflies are going to lay their eggs and they are the food that the little caterpillars are going to eat as they turn into new monarch butterflies. So you're going to start by looking under the leaves. You might find a little caterpillar already started or you might find an egg. So I'm looking under here. Let's go over. Let's check this one. There. there. Oh, here we go. Excellent jackpot. That right there is a little monarch butterfly egg. So I'm going to snap off the milkweed. You can tell that it's milkweed because it makes this milky substance when you break the stem. And then you look, see if you can see that. The egg will have these very difficult to see, delicate long stripes in texture that go up to the top of it. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this leaf inside. I'm just going to put it in a little container with a loose lid. I don't want too much humidity to build up, but I want to keep it protected and see what happens. Right here, there's the little baby caterpillar forming inside the egg. You can see the little dark head here. The adult monarch butterflies will lay hundreds of these eggs in just a few weeks. Once it hatches out, it's going to eat its egg and then start to find an edge of the leaf where it can start to munch. Milkweed is actually a toxic plant to most animals, including humans. It contains something called cardiac glycosides. This actually helps the monarch caterpillars because when they eat it, they become toxic as well to many animals. So this increases their chance of survival. But still, when a monarch butterfly lays an egg in the wild, that egg only has about a 3% chance of developing all the way into another monarch butterfly. And when we bring them inside and give them protection, we actually increase the odds of this little egg surviving to about 90%. This is really helpful for the planet as well as really interesting for our kids because these are important pollinators and their population has had a really sharp decline in the last couple of years. And that's because of climate change, because of a loss of habitat and because of lots of pesticides that are harmful to the monarchs. The caterpillar skin doesn't actually grow with it. The caterpillar doesn't have skin. It has something called an exoskeleton. Here you can see the caterpillar wriggling because it's about to break out of the exoskeleton and expand into a new bigger one, which will harden as it expands. At the bottom of the jar, we often will see pieces of the old exoskeleton and other bits of it. We know that the caterpillar eats as soon as it comes out, much like it ate the egg. Each molting stage of the caterpillar is called an instar. After a day or two, the leaf that you have the caterpillar on is going to start to wilt or dry out and it's also going to be covered in caterpillar poop. So it's not so good for the caterpillar to eat anymore. When you see this happening, just pick a new leaf from your milkweed. And then we just pick up the leaf that the caterpillar is already on and put the new leaf underneath so the caterpillar will find its way without us actually having to touch the caterpillar. When the caterpillar gets to be over about an inch long, maybe two inches, 
we tend to move it from a flat little container to a jar and put a couple twigs in it because when the caterpillar is going to be in its fifth instar and ready to turn into a pupa, it's going to start to climb up. It's going to want to find a camouflaged high place because in the wild this will be where it's the most protected against predators. It takes about 7 to 17 days for the caterpillar to go from this newly hatched little egg, little egg baby, to set into a pupa. We put a lid on the jar, but we don't screw the lid on. The caterpillar often likes to hang from the lid, but you want to make sure that there is still a little bit of airflow, like there would be outside. When the caterpillar finds a place that it decides it's going to set its pupa, it's going to weave a little pad of silk and stick itself to it. It's actually got this little hook in its belly and it's going to hang from that hook and it will make a J shape. And about 12 to 48 hours later, it's going to shed its final exoskeleton of the caterpillar stage and turn into this green pupa. The pupa is kind of boring for the next 8 to 15 days, although if you look at it, it'll get these really pretty little gold flecks and it will slowly change color. But you don't really need to do anything other than leave it alone for this week to two weeks. So this butterfly is almost set to emerge. You can see that the pupa has gone almost completely transparent and it looks kind of bluish. Look on the lower left hand side of the pupa, all of a sudden there's a little tear and uh, you start to see air leak into the shell and the whole shell darkens a little bit as more air gets between the butterfly and the shell. When the pupa finally splits open, the butterfly is going to be really wet inside. Its wings are all folded up and it needs to have enough space for the wings to fully unfold and stretch there so that it's going to develop properly and transition properly. And look at how swollen the body is right here as well. So that's because it's been one to two weeks that the butterfly hasn't been able to poop. So there's a big waste buildup and that's going to drip out from the bottom of the butterfly's body over the next couple of hours. It'll sort of be a clearish to reddish kind of a color and the butterfly's wings are going to dry off. It's going to get ready to move on. When the butterfly has hatched pretty soon after, we'll actually move it outside to a sheltered spot. If it's on the lid, we might suspend the lid between two other containers. If it's on the twig in the jar, we'll just take the lid off of the jar so that it has some freedom. And generally it will rest for up to 12 hours and then actually crawl around and explore, which is really neat. And you can see when it's ready to start moving on, it's, it's trying to get a bit of a grip on the jar lid here so it can climb up.
In general, it's really important not to touch the butterfly's wings. A butterfly may climb on you, but it's touching you with its legs. Leave its wings be so that you don't cause an injury. This is a really nice close-up of the butterfly's wings. You can see that there are thousands of tiny, tiny, tiny scales all over it. And these rub off very easily. Often we'll find them for a couple of hours in our hibiscus or in our pear tree and then a week later we'll see monarch butterflies floating around the garden and we always wonder if they're the ones that we hatched. So this little guy will probably just hang out for a couple of hours and then when he or she feels ready we'll just take off and eventually make the long trip south for the winter.